Okay, these are work solutions to the Year 7 Perimeter and Area Working Mathematically Practice questions. Here's question 1. It says that Naomi um, needs 18 lengths or pieces of ribbon that are 60 centimetres long. Which roll of ribbon should she buy? So there are a few steps in this. First we need to work out um, the length, the total length that she needs to buy. And to do that we'll do 18 times 60 centimetres. So we've got 18 times 60 centimetres, which is 1,080 centimetres. But notice all the answers here are in metres, so we need to convert this to metres. Now 1,080 centimetres, we need to convert to metres. So to go from centimetres to metres, we know that um, one metre is 100 centimetres. So to go from centimetres to metres, we'll have less metres than centimetres and the factor is 100, so we divide by 100. And so therefore 1,080 centimetres is 1,080 divided by 100, which is 10.8 metres. So just showing the conversion here, that so one metre is 100 centimetres and to convert that you would do with 1,080 divided by 100, so 10.8 metres. So therefore, looking at our um, possible answers, the 10 metre roll won't be enough, so she'll need the 12 metre roll. So therefore, she needs the 12 metre roll, and the answer for that one is D. Okay, question two. If you double both the length and width of a rectangle, how does the area change? Support your, your answer with two examples and use diagrams to help you. So we're going to look at a rectangle, we'll have a certain length and width and then we want to double it, double the length and width and see how the area changes. So I'm just going to draw some rectangles here. So just any rectangles, okay, so let's start off with say 5 centimetres times 2 centimetres. Now the area of that rectangle is 5 times 2 which is 10 centimetres squared. Now I'm going to double the length and width of this rectangle. I don't have to draw it to scale here. So if the length goes from 5 centimetres to 10 centimetres and the width goes from 4 centimetres to 2 centimetres, sorry, from 2 centimetres to 4 centimetres, so I'm doubling, I'm doubling all the lengths and the widths. Therefore the new area will be 10 centimetres times 4 centimetres which is 40 centimetres squared. First example, I'll just put EG1. Here is example two. Let's say we've got a rectangle four centimetres by three centimetres, so the area would be four centimetres times three centimetres, which is 12 centimetres squared. And this area, if I double the length from four to eight and double the width from three to six centimetres, the new area will be eight centimetres times six centimetres, which is 48 centimetres squared. Now we have to describe or um, explain um, how the area changes. Now we can see that the area has gone from 10 to 40. We don't say the area has increased by 30 here because we need to be able to say the same thing about both examples. You might decide to say something like, well the area may have doubled but it hasn't doubled. If the area doubled it'd go from 10 to 20 but the area has gone from 10 to 40. If you look at 10 and 40 and you look at 12 and 48 you'll notice that um, what you'll have to say is that the area is so many times bigger. The new area is so many times bigger than the, than the old area. We know that 10 times 4 is 40 and we also know that 12 times 4 is 48. So therefore what we can say is that the area has, in, has um, increased Sorry, um, we can say the area has increased by a factor of 4 or you can say the area is 4 times larger now or you could say the area, the new area is 4 times larger than the old area, than the original area, okay? And to say that, that the new area is 4 times larger, we say that the new area has increased by a factor of four, so it's four times bigger. You can say the new area is four times larger, or you could say four times bigger, okay, than the original area. Question three, and it says the veranda, which is the shaded area below, needs to be covered with floor tiles. So this is the veranda, or the shaded area. 
you have to calculate the area of the veranda. Now we can do this two ways. So question three, part one, the area of the veranda. We can either do it by subtraction. Now I would do it by subtraction, but you can try other methods. So what we've got is that we've got a rectangle and then this other rectangle has been cut out of it. So the area of the veranda, which is the shaded area, we can do it by the area of the large rectangle minus this bit here that's cut out. Now if we look at the large rectangle, it's 10 metres by 9 metres. So I'll just put 9 metres by 10 metres or 10 by 9. And the smaller rectangle, well it's 7 metres there and we have to work out this length across here. Now if this is 2 and 2 and all of this is 10, therefore this bit in here is 10, take away 2 and take away another 2, which is 6 metres. So this bit in here would be 6, because 2 and 6 and 2 makes 10. And this length here is the same as this one, so this length here is 7. So therefore, the area of the veranda is, um, we'll work out this area here, it's the large rectangle, which is 9 times 10. And the small rectangle is 7 times 6. So the area will be... Um, 90 take away 42 which is 48 meters squared. Now another way you could do this is to break the diagram up there and break it there. So the other way of doing it is that you would have two shapes like this. Sorry I'm just off the screen now. So I'll just come down here a bit. So you would have two shapes like this. So let's go back and look at that. So this is 2, this is 2, and that's 9 metres long up there. So we've got two rectangles that are 2 metres by 9 metres, so two of those. And we've also got this piece in here. Now, as before, we said that this was 6. Now, if this is 9, all of that's 9, and this bit here is 7, then this bit here must be 2. Okay? So we've also got this rectangle here. That is 6 by 2. So I've drawn that here. So another way that you can do the area of the veranda, this second method, is to break it up into three pieces. Now it's always easier to do two, to do the subtraction one rather than this way. But if this is the only way you think you can do it, then we'll do it that way. So therefore your area is 9 times 2 plus another 9 times 2 plus 6 times 2 which is 18 metres squared plus another 18 metres squared plus 12 metres squared. And that is the same as the answer above. Same answers, 48 metres squared. So that's the area of the veranda. That's part one of that question. Now, next part of the question. It says, Bunny's Warehouse is selling floor tiles measuring 25 centimetres by 20 centimetres at $2.25 a tile. And Ace Hardware is selling floor tiles measuring 20 centimetres by 20 centimetres at $1.95 per tile. Which of the two stores, Bunny's Warehouse or Ace Hardware, should you buy your tiles from to save on costs? And you must support your answer with mathematical calculations. In other words, you can't just say you should buy from Bunny's or you should buy from Ace. You wouldn't get any marks for doing that. Okay, now just noticing if we look back at part um, one, we worked out the area of the veranda. Now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to draw a little diagram. So this is the veranda, it looks like this, and sorry, I'm, it's not a very good diagram, but the area of this is 48 metres squared. We already worked that out in part one. And we have to we have to tile that veranda, so lots of little tiles are going to be placed on this veranda. Okay, and the whole veranda is going to be tiled. So we have to see how many tiles will fit onto this into this space that's going to be the veranda. So let's look at bunnies. Bunnies. Now their floor tiles are 25 centimetres by 20 centimetres. Problem is when we work out the area of one of those floor tiles, it's going to be in centimetres squared. And the area of our veranda is in metres squared. So what we need to do is convert our veranda area into centimetres squared. So we know our veranda area is 48 metres squared. So to convert that to centimetres squared, remember one centimetre, sorry, 
100 centimetres equals 1 metre. But if you want to do metres squared, so to convert from metres to centimetres, you'll times by 100. But to convert from metres squared to centimetres squared, you won't be timesing by 100. You'll be timesing by 100 twice, so times 100 and times another 100, or you just double the number of zeros. So 1 metre squared will be, not be 100 centimetres squared, it'll be 10,000 centimetres squared, or 100 times 100 centimetres squared. So to convert from metre squared to centimetres squared, you can times by 100 twice, or you just times by 10,000. And the answer for that veranda area is 40, 480,000 centimetres squared. So before you do any calculations for this next part, you need to convert that area of the veranda into centimetres squared. Now we know that at Bunny's warehouse, that one tile is 25 centimetres times 20 centimetres. So I'm going to do the area of one tile for Bunny's is 25 centimetres times 20 centimetres, which is 500 centimetres squared. So each tile from Bunnies is, um, has an area of 500 centimetres squared. So we have to see how many of these tiles will be needed to cover 480,000 centimetres squared. So the number of tiles that we need will be 480,000 divided by 500, you can do that on your calculator, 480,000 divided by 500, and we'll get 960 tiles. Now, we need to go back and look at the question. So we've worked out how many tiles we need, but and we know that the cost of each tile is $2.25, so now we can work out the cost. The cost um, for tiling from bunnies is 960, 960 times $2.25, which is $2,160. So that's how much it will cost to tile from Bunnies. Now we look at the next hardware. Ace Hardware sells floor tiles, which are a little bit smaller. They're 20 centimeters by 20 centimeters, and they're $1.95 each. So we have to work out how much that's gonna cost. So let's come down and do our ACE hardware working out. So we've got ACE. For ACE, we've got the area of one tile. As we saw, it was 20 centimetres times 20 centimetres, which is 400 centimetres squared. Again, doing the same sort of working out. The number of tiles needed, so number of tiles needed. Remember, the area is 480,000 centimetres squared. And we divide that by 400 and we will get that we need 1200 tiles but we have to work out the cost of those tiles and just going back for Ace Hardware we've worked out the error of the tiles we've worked out how many we need and each tile is $1.95 so therefore the cost if you get your tiles from Ace is 1200 times $1.95 and working that out, you need to use your calculator for all these girls. You'll get $2,340. Therefore, we can see that Bunnies is cheaper and Ace is more expensive. So let's work out the difference. So the difference between those costs is 2,340 take away 2,160. So there's a $180 difference. So therefore, um, bunnies is the best buy and you've got to say by how much by $180 because you will save $180 so you should buy your tiles from bunnies because it is cheaper so it's the best buy or you can say bunnies is cheaper buy so you can it's the best buy or it's cheaper by $180 now, this question, you might look at it and think that it's quite difficult and everything. It might be worth five or six marks. But every time you do a calculation, just like working out the area of a tile, that would be one mark. Then 
dividing and seeing how many of these 500s go into the 480,000. That's another mark. So even though you may look at the whole thing and think it's quite difficult, every time you do a step, even if you can work out the area of the tiles and maybe work out how many tiles are needed, or be able to multiply by $1.95 or multiply by $2.25, it, it doesn't matter if your answer before is incorrect, you will still get um, marks for working out, which is why you need to set it out properly like this. So you need to show the teacher so that they can see exactly what you're doing. Error of one tile, show the working, give the answer, how many tiles you need. Show your working with the division, give the answer. Show your working for cost. Don't just write 960 times $2.25. Write at least cost equals, okay? because every step that you do is one mark, okay? Okay, now for question four. Um, draw two shapes with the same perimeter but different areas. Look, you could do rectangles, you could do triangles, but it's much easier if you're going to use rectangles, okay? So question four, two shapes with the same perimeter. i just do two different rectangles. I would do, you know, a really easy type of... Um, Choose easy numbers, so don't go choosing really difficult type perimeters, just choose really easy numbers and they don't have to be drawn exactly to scale unless we ask you. So I might say, right, I'm going to let my perimeter equal 20 for both my shapes. Now, 20 is a nice easy number, I can do metres or centimetres, it doesn't matter. But if the perimeter, the distance around the whole thing and it's a rectangle, so if the distance around all of it is 20 and it's a rectangle, then half of the perimeter would be 10. So this side, the length and one width would be 10. So if you want a perimeter of 20, you just need half the perimeter to be, to be 10. So you would just find any two numbers that add up to 10, and I'm going to do 7 and 3. So with this one, if my um, dimensions, or if my length is 7 and my width is 3, 7 plus 3 is 10, another 7 and 3 is 10, that gives me a perimeter of 20. Okay, I just need here, I might do 6 and 4, because 6 and 4 add up to 10, and another 6 and 4 add up to 10, that also has a perimeter of 20. So, I've shown here that my perimeter is 20, and so the area of both of these shapes, area is length times breadth, which is 7 times 3, so the area of this rectangle is 21 metres squared, and the area of this other rectangle is 24 metres squared. So therefore, here I've drawn two shapes with the same perimeter, but different areas, okay? Now other rectangles I could have drawn would have been um, with eight and two. I could have done eight and two or nine and one. I could have even done a square with five and five. So just many different um, possibilities there, okay? Um, I'll just draw another one here, five and five. This would be a square, but. So the perimeter of this is, so I've just drawn a square there, is 20. And the area is 5 times 5, which is 25. So here I've actually drawn three shapes with the same perimeter in different areas. Okay. Now for question 5, it says the perimeter of a rectangular pool is 58 metres. Now remember, perimeter is the distance around the outside. So if the perimeter is 58 means the distance around the outside. I'm going to draw my rectangle with all the indicators on it. If this is 17, then this would also be 17. Now, there are two ways of doing this question. They're saying if the length of the pool is 17 metres, find the area. Well, we really need to find the other side before we can find the area. Just look, thinking of the way we did the last question, if the perimeter is 58 metres, then two sides, the length and the width, will add up to half of 58. So we can go 58 divided by 2. Sorry, just you can't see that. So 58 divided by 2 is 29 metres. So these two sides add up to 29. So, and then we can just do 29 minus 17 is 12 metres. So the missing side is 12 metres. That's one way of finding out. I'll just put W, the width, is the missing side, which is 12 metres. Another way you can work out the missing side, you can go the perimeter is 58 metres. You can add up the sides that you've got, which are 17 and 17 are 34. Then we can say, well, the remaining two sides must be 58 minus 34, 
which is 24 meters. So that's for those two shorter sides. And then you can say, well, they're both the same, those two shorter sides. So 24 divided by two, that would be the width is 24 divided by two, which is 12 meters. So we've just worked out there that this other side is 12 meters. Okay, now to find the area, it's length times breadth or length times width. It doesn't matter if you call it breadth or width. Um, I'll just call it width in this case, but you can also call it breadth. So it will be 17 metres times 12 metres, and therefore the area of this tool is 17 times 12, which is 204 metres squared. So to be able to do this question, you have to work out the missing side first, and then work out the area. Okay? And there were two different ways of working out that missing side, okay? Okay, now for question six, it says a garden measuring six meters by eight meters, by 4.8 meters, sorry, has a pathway one meter wide around its border. Now I'm going to draw this. Now when you do this type of question, it's really important that you draw it or that you mark the diagram that you're given on your workbook, because we know that this length here is six and this is 4.8 from there to there. But what you really need to do is mark in all your other sides of one. This is also one. This length here is one. And this here is one. So that you can work out the area of the outer rectangle. Now if from there to there is six, and this bit here is one. So if I want to go all the way across, I've got one and six and another one. Six plus one plus one is eight. So this distance up here is 8, or I can write it down the bottom if I want. So I've just put it up the top. Same with this length here. If this is 4.8 from there to there, and that's 1, and that's 1, we've got 4.8 plus 1 plus 1, which is 6.8 metres. So to do the area of the pathway, which is the unshaded bit, if all this middle bit is shaded, the area of the pathway will be the large rectangle might take away the smaller rectangle inside. Now the large rectangle according to our diagram measures 8 meters by 6.8 meters and the small rectangle is 6 meters by 4.8 meters. So I'm just off the screen. So working out the area of those two rectangles and then subtracting We've got 8 times 6.8 is 54.4 metres squared. Take away this smaller area. Sorry, I'll just show my working there. I'll just put the answer. So for this large rectangle, it's 8 metres times 6.8 metres, which is 54.4 metres squared. And this smaller rectangle is 6 metres times 4.8 metres which is 28.8 metres squared. So we need to do 54.4, take away 28.8, which is 25.6 metres squared. So that is the area of this pathway, the unshaded bit. Okay, that's, the, that's part one of the question. Now for part two, it says a wooden fence needs to be built along the perimeter of the garden, which is the shaded area. So here's the garden. So we're going to have a wooden fence all the way around there. Now they've got a diagram of the wooden fence, what it's going to look like. So a wooden fence is going to be built along the perimeter of the garden, which is the shaded area. And these planks are all 12 centimetres wide. So that distance there is 12 centimetres. So is this one. So all these distances are 12 centimetres. So, and there are no gaps between the planks and we have to see how many planks are needed for the fence. Now these planks are going to come all along the fence here. So fence, planks all the way along here around the shaded garden. Okay, so let's see how many we need. Okay, now we have the area of the pathway. To do this next part of the question, we don't want the area of the pathway. We need the perimeter of the garden. So I'm just going to draw the garden here. 
garden is six meters by 4.8 meters we're going to have fences all the way along there and each one no gaps of course each plank is 12 centimeters wide so we need the perimeter of the garden and that will be six sorry six meters plus 4.8 plus six plus 4.8 so six plus 4.8 plus 6 plus 4.8, this is all in metres, and we'll get 10.8 plus another 10.8, which is 21.6 metres. Now, we need to see how many of these planks, and they're all 12 centimetres wide, how many 12 centimetre planks fit into 21.6 metres. So, the problem is that the perimeter is in metres, but the length of the planks, the width, sorry, of the planks are 12 centimeters. So we need to convert our perimeter to centimeters. So the perimeter is 21.6 meters, which is the same as 21.6 times 100 centimeters, because we know that one meter is 100 centimeters. So to convert from meters to centimeters, you times by 100. And we get 2,160 centimeters. So that's what the perimeter, I'll just write perimeter of the garden is. So therefore, the number of planks of wood that you need are 2,160 divided by 12. We need to see how many 12s go into 2,160. And we get 180 planks. Okay, so that's um, your answer for question six. Again, showing all your working, showing each step. There'll be one mark for this. There'll be one mark to convert from metres to centimetres. And there'll be one mark here for the division. So you don't just go and write an answer. You really need to be showing working, write perimeter, give your answer in metres. Then you need to convert to centimetres and then you need to divide by 12. Okay, in question seven, we're asked to calculate the area of that composite figure. So I'm going to draw the figure here. But what we're going to need to do to work out its area, we're going to divide it into two shapes. So I'm going to draw, divide it into the rectangle and I'm going, sorry, into the triangle, and I'm going to do the rectangle as well. So now you need to work out the lengths or the dimensions of, of these shapes so that you can work out the area. Okay, let's look at the rectangle first. We know that this length across here is 5 and this is 12. And with this shape, we've got 2 centimetres there, 2 centimetres here, and this length here is 5. So the base of the triangle is 2 plus 5 plus 2, which is um, 9 centimetres. And we need this height of the triangle. Now, if the whole height here is 16 and this bit's 12, then 12 plus 4 is 16. So the perpendicular height of the triangle is 4 centimetres. So now that we've broken up our composite shape, composite means it's made up of more than one figure, um, we can work out the area of each of these. So the area of a triangle, remember the formula is half times the base times the height, which is a half times nine times four. Now you just do that on your calculator and you can do, um, and you should get 18 centimeters squared. You can also do it without your calculator. A half of four is two and two times nine is 18. So the area of this rectangle is length times breadth doesn't matter which one's which, okay? So 12 times 5, which is 60 centimetres squared. So therefore, the total area or the composite area is 18 plus 60, which is 78 centimetres squared. Okay, so don't forget to divide your shapes up into smaller shapes. Okay, now for question 8. It says the two shapes below, which is a rectangle and a square, have the same area. Find the length of the side of the square. So let's just draw our first shape, the rectangle. And this is 18 metres and this is 8 metres. Well, let's work out the area of this shape because that's really easy to find. So the area of that rectangle is length times breadth, which is 18 times 8, 18 metres times 8 metres. And using your calculator for this, 18 times 8 is 144 metres squared. Now they've told us that the rectangle and the square have the same area. So I'm going to draw my square here. And these two have the same area. So therefore the area of this is also 144 metres squared. Now with a square, the two sides are the same. 
remember the area of a square is side times side and that equals 144 centimeters squared so you've got to think what number times itself gives you 144 okay you can try 10 times 10 that's 100 11 times 11 is 121 but 12 times 12 is 144 so the side length of the square is 12 meters and the reason is because 12 times 12 is 144 so these are meters squared so therefore your answer is 12 meters okay and now for the last question question nine okay question nine Minnie made the statement if two different rectangles have the same perimeter they will also have the same area now we've looked at questions like this earlier um question nine and no, not question nine sorry um it was in question four we had to draw shapes with the same perimeter but different areas so if two different rectangles have the same perimeter they'll have the same area the question is is mini statement true or false well it is false so it's false and support your answer by sketching two different rectangles with the same perimeter and testing the areas so let's look um, we can choose different measurements to be four, but choose easy numbers. I wouldn't choose anything too difficult. I mean, I might make this time the perimeter equal to 10. So if the perimeter is 10, let's just choose some numbers. Um, that means that the two sides, the length and the breadth, would have to add up to five. So I might go three centimetres and two centimetres. So this rectangle has a perimeter of 10 because three plus two is five and another three and two is five. Let me do another rectangle with perimeter of 10. I could do four centimeters and one centimeter. So the perimeter again is 10 because four plus one is five and another four plus one is five, meaning my perimeter is 10 centimeters. But let's look at the areas. The area is three centimeters times two centimeters, which is six centimeters squared. And the area of this second rectangle is four centimeters times one centimeter again length times breadth or length times width which is four centimeters squared so therefore these two um, rectangles are different they have the same perimeter but they have different areas so therefore we can say these rectangles have the same perimeter but they have different areas okay and that's the end of the practice questions um, for measurement